All right. Well, here's the thing is I, I know that I've said a couple times now that um, there is a certain percentage that uh, the solar panels lose if they are dirty. Um, if you clean solar panels, you'll have this much increase. We're all guilty of that. And, you know, the difference between the two is very little. In fact, there's really no difference. The thing about it is the amount, the percentage is so hard to actually uh, to estimate. So I really need to be truthful about this. And we kind of actually need to stop saying this. And that is the truth. Welcome to Solar Panel Cleaning Mini Episodes. I am your host, Chris. Um, here we are today, and we're going to talk about this. You know, last Friday, excuse me, last Friday, <laughs> last Thursday at 4 p.m., I had Carla Dawson and Mike Draper on to the Solar Panel Cleaning Podcast, the, the very first episode of the, let's say, the third season. We're back again, and it was awesome. They were on there to talk about their, their new online solar panel cleaning certification program, Soiler Tech, which is joined with Mike Draper's expert safety services. So if you didn't have a chance, go back and watch that. Excuse me. <laughs> go back and watch that. That's the uh, coffee really getting to me. Okay. Um, can checking the readings of an inverter for a solar panel cleaning system, um, for a solar panel system, it's just habit to say solar panel cleaning. Um, checking the solar panel system before a cleaning and after a cleaning gives me good results as to if the solar panel cleaning helps the solar panels. That's basically the question. Is the solar panel cleaning um, effective? What what does it do? And checking the inverter, you know, by looking at those numbers, is that an accurate way to just say, yes, this is how um, to judge if the solar panel cleaning is effective for uh, solar panel, solar panel systems? That's not really how we should be looking at it. There are a lot of different factors. Checking the readings from the solar panel inverter before and after cleaning the solar panels can indeed provide useful insight about the impact of cleaning on their performance. However, there are other factors to consider for the full results to be accurate. There's a lot of people that um, say that and, um, you know, maybe they, we should kind of actually listen to that a, a little bit more. I'm not trying to say anything is right or wrong as we're going to go through here. You'll you'll find out. I, I have done the research and found that there were some negatives and some positives about everything that was being said. So there, there are factors here. Number one, the readings need to be compared under similar environmental conditions, specifically under terms of sunlight availability. Therefore, it's important that the readings before and after cleaning are taken at the same time of day and under similar weather conditions. This is impossible for me. For my residential company, I cannot, um, I cannot say that that the the customer, any given customer, is going to have their appointments from um, whether it be once a year, twice a year, three times a year. That from year to year, those cleanings, those cleaning appointments are going to be at the same type of, of uh, similar conditions. It's just impossible. Energy consumption, um, you know, whether it be residential or commercial, the energy consumption that is taken from that uh, home or establishment, um, if it increases from the cleaning to cleaning, then that's a possible reason of uh, different changes in, you know, significant change in the output. Um, they may not be getting so much output because they've recently purchased an electric vehicle and now they're they're plugging that in solar irradiance now i am not out there doing this but this is you know it basically the the sun what is the sun values like what is the weather like and that's what it comes down to is is what is the the sunlight on that day not only that day but i believe the day before the cleaning and after the cleaning these these are different factors test duration Testing duration. While it's good to check immediately before and after cleaning, a long-term comparison would provide more accurate results. These one-off factors, um, like a particularly bright or cloudy day, that's a perfect example, um, they can skew the results. You know, they, There's variations there. And depending on, like I said with my customers, 
um, it's it's not always the same. So there's a there's a big difference on the cleanings um, from appointment to appointment, year to year. The amount of dirt before cleaning, the degree to which the panels were dirty before cleaning will affect how much of a difference you see, or the uh, the customer or the client. It, it varies. There are so many things that can take place. One year we had, um, living in California, we had uh, fires. Well, that's basically almost every year. But the ashes that were carried um, from these fires heavily um, coated solar panels. And because of that, we had a high, a high year of cleaning. I think a lot of people did. This was last year. I think a lot of people uh, that have solar panel cleaning companies in California um, saw uh, an increase or a spike in their cleanings um, around the summertime due to this this situation. Oops. If you consider these factors and see a significant increase in power um, output after cleaning, it would suggest that regular cleaning could enhance the solar panel efficiency. Um, remember that while cleanliness is important, there are other factors like age, wear and tear, and technical issues that can affect the solar performance. Um, I recently went to a, um, a residential appointment um, within the past four or five months, and we came across a, an install that just looked very shoddy. There, there looked like the connectors were, were an issue as we were doing a visual um, inspection. We noticed some wear and tear and some degradation um, as we reported it to the, the customer, and we did not um, we did not do the cleaning, but we did report to the customer and they had their installer come out and the installer had told them that, hey, yeah, there, there is a problem. And, and um, it was actually a good thing that we didn't clean the solar panels because they were in a, a dangerous situation. So um, that, that definitely uh, the age wear and tear and technical issues um, are a, a, a bigger impactor and a, a bigger part of this. Too many variables. <clears throat> Who are these cleaners? Who are these cleaners, Chris? Well, there are cleaners like myself um, that have said that you can increase your solar efficiency by 15 to 25% when you have your solar panels professionally cleaned. Um, where does it come from? Why is it said? Is it a selling point? What data are we taking this from? And how is it calculated? Some real truth, all right? Not just either side saying yes or no, that's, that's good or bad. The statement that professional solar panel cleaning can increase efficiency by 15 to 25 percent is likely a selling point based on a few key assumptions. It's important to know that this range is a generalized claim and actual results can vary based on several factors. So many variables here. It's a plethora of variables to consider. Buildup of dirt and debris. Of course, over time, dust, bird droppings, leaves, and other debris can accumulate on the surface of solar panels, blocking sunlight and reducing the panel's efficiency. In areas where high levels of dust or debris or locations where panels are less likely to be naturally cleaned by rain, this efficiency loss can be significant. Definitely. From system to system to change. You know, uh, haven't I already said this? Location dictates everything. It really does. Take a drink there. Pre-cleaning efficiency. If the solar panels are significantly dirty or haven't been cleaned in a long time, the efficiency gains from cleaning could potentially reach the 15 to 25% range. So this is a possibility. But this is likely a best case scenario. In many cases, the improvement might be less, especially if panels were only slightly dirty to begin with or if they're regularly cleaned by rainfall. Um, location dictates everything. Number three, professional cleaning techniques and tools. Professional cleaners have access to specialized cleaning equipment and techniques that can clean panels more effectively than a typical homer, homeowner, uh, homer, a uh, homer Simpson, <laughs> than a typical homer Simpson might be able to. <laughs> That's kind of funny and fits, but uh, I'm sorry, I meant, I meant homeowner. Um, but this can potentially lead to a higher increase in panel efficiency post-cleaning. 
course. You know, there are a lot of different um, tools that are accessible to solar panel cleaners, whether that be a manual water fed brush with a plethora of brush um, options available to them, a rotary or a rotation brush. I mean, there, there's a lot of different possibilities and, and um, equipment and different techniques for solar panel cleaners out there. So um, this, this is all, all important stuff here. And what we're getting to is the scientific studies on the impact of dirt on solar panel efficiency have found a wide range of results, depending on the location and the type of dirt. For example, a study published in the Journal of Solar Energy in 2017 found that an arid region of Kuwait, Kuwait um, dust accumulation, <laughs> This is going to be so to, so fun to to listen back to. Uh, my my reading is just just amazing. Um, Kuwait dust accumulation on the solar panels could reduce their output by eighteen point seventy four percent. But this is an extreme environment. I mean, location dictates how much. In less dusty or rainy locations, the efficiency loss due to dust or dirt might be much lower. Obviously. So, I mean, in California, I'm seeing something totally different than what they're seeing in uh, Kuwait. I mean, obviously. Well, it's true the dirty solar panels can reduce efficiency and cleaning them can improve their performance. <clears throat> the 15 or 25 percent improvement claim is likely based on the higher end of potential results. It would be beneficial for the consumer to balance the cost and frequency of professional cleaning services that we provide with the actual gains of the power output. And as much, you know, we should go ahead and they're, they're going to be thinking about that's that's kind of like the customer's mind when they're thinking about this and they get this type of knowledge. For us, it's how often do we need to to clean their solar panels, and we need to to teach our customers and educate them on, on exactly um, the performance that they're getting out of it. I don't. I don't want to be out there having myself or my guys cleaning solar panels and we're just cleaning uh, month after month after month of a customer. And I've heard this. I've actually heard where there are people um, who had businesses and or just rather cleaners, if you want to say, that were out there cleaning their customers, not just once or twice a year, but once a month. And that to me is just insane. It's intense. How can I formulate the percentage loss of a solar panel system? First in a commercial setting and second in a residential setting. Would you calculate them different? Please tell me this in simple terms that are easily understood. Whether it's a commercial or residential setting, the basic principle of calculating the efficiency loss of a solar panel system remains the same. However, there are, um, may be different factors to consider such as scale, type of installation, and load requirements. Now. I can tell you this, that I run into a um, ridiculous amount of different types of installations. And there's not only just the um, installers that are uh, vary from installation to installation from my residential customers, but there's the different types of panels that are installed. All of these variables have a uh, um, um, definitely weigh in on this percentage, that efficiency. There's mono versus poly uh, crystalline solar panels. Um, these both have a specific efficiency rating. So solar panels vary. <laughs> this is good. Here's a simple way to calculate the percentage loss. Number one, establish baseline performance. Um, you know, you have optimal results versus actual results. The optimal results, those are the, the when the system is newly installed, um, and that's under peak conditions, standard conditions, as, which are like usually the best performance conditions. Um, those are the optimal um, output. And that's day one, you know, out the box. That's, that's what the customer, you know, should be getting. That's our, our baseline. Regular readings. That's that actual output. So when I go and I take the output from my customers, the before and after, those are the actual outputs that, that's coming out of that solar panel. That's why it's important. Calculate the loss. Subtract the current output from the baseline output that gives you the amount of power loss. Calculate the percentage loss. Divide the power loss by the baseline output and then multiply 
by 100 to convert this to a percentage. So this is the formula, okay? And then we want to talk about how important this is or, or how accurate this is. I want to get to that. But first, this is the simple formula. Let's go through this. This baseline output, this is the initial or expected output of the solar panel system under standard conditions, like I said. The current output, we go out, we do our cleaning. Subtract it, we divide it, we calculate the percentage. With this, We've calculated that there is a 10% loss in efficiency compared to the baseline output. So this is a percentage, but how much does it take into consider consideration uh, like the other factors that we had mentioned um, earlier? When you compare the baseline output and the current output, you do so under similar conditions such as time of day, weather, and season to avoid skewing the results with factors unrelated to system's actual output. How easy is that? You know? And again, we're talking about, we're solar panel cleaners. How many cleaners out there are recording all this information? Well, we trust what we've, we've heard um, and what's been said over and over. Hopefully we're kind of putting an end to that. Oh, jumping ahead here, jumping ahead here. In the commercial setting, commercial settings often have larger, more complex solar systems, and thus there may be a bit additional considerations such as losses due to shading from nearby buildings or efficiency losses in power inverters. For commercial settings, it's often a good idea to monitor each panel individually, if possible, as a single malfunctioning panel can over affect or can, excuse me, can affect the overall performance of the system. And let me just add. On a com commercial level, um, there are probably somebody who's already hired to take care of that. And it's usually not the solar panel cleaner. In my days previous when I did commercial solar panel cleaning, which was the first four and a half years of, of my whole uh, career here, um, over a decade long, and I love this thing, is that we were not in charge to do this kind of stuff. We did a visual inspection, where is where, my visual inspection that I do for residential was rooted from. That's where I get everything from. So, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, a little harper in there. Had some Jack in the Box earlier. <clears throat> Gotta watch that that uh, fast food. Tell you what, drink. You guys drink more water and stay away from the fast food. They hired us to clean the solar panels, and when they hired us to clean the solar panels, they were usually doing readings before and after. It was important for them. That's on a large scale. With residential, generally have smaller, simpler solar, uh, solar setups. However, the same principles apply. Regularly monitoring the system's output and compare this to the baseline to calculate efficiency loss. In residential settings, shading from trees or nearby structures could be a significant factor affecting efficiency. This is a bigger factor for residential. Really, really is. Because there's more possibilities on a residential um, level. So that's that's uh, definitely one thing that, that I feel. I've heard, I've read that, and then that's, that's how I, I strongly feel about it too because I, I've experienced it. The residential customers have a different type of situation. The shading, the soiling, it varies so much for residential. With a commercial setting, it's going to be whatever the shading and soiling is. For the most part, that's what it's going to be from year to year. Um, location dictates everything. But regardless of setting, um, it's crucial to consider the same external factors when taking readings. For example, weather conditions, time of day, season to ensure you're comparing like for like. This is because solar panel output can vary significantly based on these factors, like we've been saying repeatedly in, the, in this uh, episode. Solar panels lose efficiency over time due to aging and wear and tear. This is known as solar panel degradation, which again, this Thursday at 4 p.m., join in with me as we're gonna be talking about solar panel degradation and solar panel defect. Um, also, it's natural process. There's, you know, a lifespan of solar panels. 
Most modern panels are expected to retain at least 80 to 90 percent of their output after 25 years. Most, right? You know, there's there's a lot of factors. As a solar panel cleaner, are there any reasons to check the inverter of a solar panel system? Um, should we? It's a great picture. I don't know why I added that, but. As a solar panel cleaner, you might not typically be expected to check the functioning of an inverter as this falls more within the realm of an electrician or the solar technician. However, having a basic understanding of an inverter's role and being able to read its output can indeed be beneficial. Here is why. One, performance verification. By checking the inverter's readings before and after cleaning, you can demonstrate to your client the tangible benefits of your service in terms of power output. This can help in making your service more val valuable and convincing to your customers. Identifying underperformance. If the inverter is displaying unusually low output figures, it could be an indicator that there is an issues or that there are issues with the solar panel system beyond just cleanliness. In such cases, you can suggest your clients have a more thorough checkup done by their solar technician. Improved service. If you're offering a more comprehensive maintenance service, understanding the inverter's readings can help identify potential issues with the overall solar system. This could include problems with the inverter itself, again, issues with, uh, with wiring or malfunctioning, blah, 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 malfunctioning panels. These are going to be harder and harder. It's the time length, man. I'm going to have to prepare more, get myself more Dr. Peppers. Which, by the way, if you guys want to get me anything, send me some Dr. Peppers. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope that you've learned something. We will be back again um, weekly with many episodes that I, I will drop um, again this Friday. This Friday. That's the second time I've done that. I'm really pushing for the week to be over. It's I, I've got to get it together. It even says it right here. This Thursday at 4 p.m. Catch us again on the Solar Panel Cleaning Podcast as I will be talking about solar panel degradation and uh, defects. These are things that um, we've seen a lot in the group of people talking about and, and posting pictures and asking, hey, what is this? Um, I've seen yellow spots, um, blown out spots, and, and what is this and, and why is it? How is it? Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that. We're also going to discuss about the dangers of it. Um, some of those things can be very dangerous and, and can electrocute you. So we'll be talking about that kind of stuff. All right, guys, if you want, you can go online at www.spcf, that F should be capitalized, spcfonline.com. Um, learn more about the, uh, the community, or you can go to the group, facebook.com backslash groups, backslash solar panel cleaning friends. Don't forget to subscribe at youtube.com solar panel cleaning friends. And guys, I also want to drop that this, uh, these mini episodes are brought to you by solar tech. Um, we would drop the link for you guys. You've been asking about the link to, uh, to learn more about the, the online solar panel cleaning certification program. So I'm going to put the link in the description. Also in the comments, you'll find it. Support the group by uh, going and buying a t-shirt or a coffee mug. We appreciate you guys and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.